Hey guys, David here and welcome to another video. I am finally continuing with the post-human PC build and as you can see I've already made quite the progress. After finishing the steampunk keyboard that I uh, designed to fit alongside this PC I had more motivation again to continue working on it and I did make some major changes to what I had originally planned but more on that later. First of all, I want to give a big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video and this PC build. They make super high quality PCBs that are very affordable to use, so perfect for prototyping. But not only do they make PCBs, they also offer manufacturing services such as 3D printing and CNC machining. And in 3D printing, they also offer metal 3D printing, which is what I used to 3D print these awesome looking uh, RAM heat spreaders and also this. CPU block, which as you'll hear later, I'm sadly not using anymore, but that's not to any fault of PCB way. Uh, their products are super high quality. Make sure to go check them out down below. Now last you saw me working on this PC build, uh, it was still supposed to be a mineral oil cooled computer, which was my super awesome idea of how to make this even more cool. And I wish I could have done that, but uh, going back into this project, I had to scale back my expectations a little bit uh, in the interest of actually being able to finish it this time. My plan was to make everything super nice, all the metal parts should be actually metal, uh, nothing painted and everything super nicely machined and polished and looking beautiful, but time is a thing and uh, I don't have that much experience with that stuff so I had to scale back the expectations to a point where I'm now doing this as a water-cooled build instead of uh, mineral oil-cooled and uh, as you can see some of these uh, copper parts they're not actually copper they're just painted but I'll get into that in a second. Getting back into it I started off by CNT machining a bunch of stuff since uh, I wanted to play around more with my Rattrick Killer Bee so I uh, machined this uh, base out of wood which was basically which was pretty straightforward uh, just did some contours around and then uh, did an adaptive uh, clearing it for this uh, rather large chamfer. Before going uh, back over it with a chamfer uh, mill, uh, just doing multiple passes uh, all the way uh, down this uh, step. And uh, while I could have left a bit more stock to leave, uh, there are still some marks from the uh, clearing before. Uh, that doesn't really matter since I will finish uh, this base anyhow. And uh, then uh, it, this will not be visible anymore at all. I also went ahead and machined this uh, fan drill here, which I think turned out great. This is a half millimeter brass plate and uh, was okay to machine. Uh, not ideal. Uh, if it was a bit harder, it would have been easier to machine. Still quite gummy, but it worked fine. I went uh, in first with a uh, four millimeter uh, and I'll do just gonna get the majority out and then uh, cleaned up uh, some of the corners that I wanted a bit sharper with a two millimeter one. After that, I just uh, cleaned up the edges, gave it a bit of a sanding and then uh, polished it up to look quite nice. I also gave it slight bends to just not quite look as flat, it just gonna pop out a little bit. Uh, it's not really much at all, but it just gonna makes it look slightly more alive, in my opinion. With that, I uh, also moved on to CNC machining uh, the cable combs here. Uh, I've been putting that off uh, for a long time. Uh, but it uh, turns out that uh, while well, machining these brass plates was a big pain in the rear side, uh, the material that I got for uh, these uh, cable combs was a lot easier to machine. It was actually properly machinable uh, brass and uh, was no issue whatsoever. The only issue I had there was that I was a bit too ambitious uh, with uh, how many tabs I can have and how many screws. Uh, so the tabs in the end just didn't quite hold anymore and I had to prematurely stop some of it uh, and then just finish them off by hand uh, with some files. But since I had to file off the tabs anyhow this was not that much more uh, and it was a very good learning experience. After that I went ahead and soldered them uh, to uh, the rest of the brain structure and uh, 
once again had to uh, some learning experiences, uh, mainly that uh, these uh, newly machined parts are quite a bit thinner than the big uh, rods. Uh, so heating it up with the blowtorch, it was hard to get the rod up to the temperature while not uh, completely melting uh, the cable cones. Some of them are slightly misshapen now because uh, I melted them and had to drill out the holes again, but they still look pretty uh, good and you can't really tell with the cables installed in them. After soldering everything uh, and also adding some uh, legs uh, so I can actually mount it to the, to the base, uh, it was time for sanding and polishing and oh my god was that ever a big pain. I mean I expected about as much. Uh, but uh, it was many hours of sanding and more sanding and time for some good podcasts for sure. Uh, and after that, uh, polishing and uh, like my wrists were sore for multiple days afterwards uh, from all the uh, sanding and polishing work. But after that, I gave it just a little bit of a coat with some uh, spray lacquer so it uh, doesn't oxidize. And uh, while it doesn't look quite as shiny anymore, uh, this way uh, it will actually stay like this and uh, not oxidize uh, as some of the other uh, materials have done over uh, the time. It was a good way of uh, knowing how much they will oxidize over time uh, just because I actually left them lying around for half a year. Like this copper tube here uh, does not look very shiny anymore uh, while it was super shiny copper when I bought it. Now one thing that I obviously had to replace is the CPU cooling block and while I'm a huge fan of uh, this uh, one that I designed uh, myself and then had PCBWay uh, 3D print out of aluminum and then I polished it up nicely using a, like an EK uh, water block backplate uh, and it looks gorgeous and would have fit the theme amazingly but as you might be able to tell there is one port that's an inlet and the outlet is everything around, which would have worked great for this being submerged in mineral oil and everything kind of spraying around the motherboard and cooling the other components. But if I hooked up water to that, well, you can imagine how that would turn out. So instead I'm using a Corsair uh, block. Uh, this is actually uh, what I got as a prize for winning third place in mod of the month for my Cry PC and uh, was a good uh, opportunity to put that to good use. I Obviously I had to uh, paint uh, the little uh, trim around the top since uh, copper is sadly not one of the colors they offer. But uh, I just did that while painting all of the other things. I also 3D printed uh, this pump mount here since the stock one is just kind of boring and uh, this looks a lot nicer. I also went ahead and this time remembered the power button. I designed a little uh, case for that and also for the uh, power plug in the back. And uh, for these, of course, I will still have to route out a little pocket so they can sit in here and then the cables uh, will be drilled uh, through the base and then this should be nicely housed inside of here. I also still have to uh, finalize the exact position of the different things. Uh, they are not uh, screwed in yet, they're just kind of sitting here. Uh, has kind of to do with like the fittings so that everything lines up nicely. I also might have to uh, buy some uh, more 90 degree fittings as uh, one of them here is a different brand. It's uh, EK whereas these ones are XSPC. And while I wouldn't mind that as much, uh, these ones are nickel while everything else is chrome. So I might have to change that. Uh, also only having ever worked with 16 millimeter water cooling tubing, these 12 millimeter fittings just look adorable. And 12 millimeter since uh, the hardware store does not sell 60 millimeter copper tubing, just uh, 12, 15, 18. And so 12 is the one that I can easily get fittings for. So that's what I went with. This will be one of the next steps, uh, cutting all the different tubing bits and then soldering it using these uh, 90 degree uh, connectors uh, so that everything fits up nicely. And then I'll of course uh, polish that up beautifully as well so that there's going to be more shiny copper everywhere. But that will have to wait for the next and final part where I'll uh, finish off the base, uh, do all the water cooling uh, bits and a uh, bunch of little uh, details and then you'll uh, get a final uh, glam montage of everything set up. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that and if you like this video leave a like down below. It was a long time in the making and took a lot of uh, effort uh, but I hope that you enjoyed it. So thanks for watching and until next time.